Welcome back to my channel. Today I just wanted to do a sit down, get ready with me video and show you how I created this look that I wore recently where it has this really beautiful like inner corner sky blue color. It's actually a pretty simple look to do, really easy to throw together if you just need a pop of color or just really quick makeup that you can wear for an event or something. I already put on some lip balm. I used this one from Laneige. This is their Lip Glowy Balm in Berry. I've been really loving this. It's really hydrating on the lips. Uh, the only thing is it's like a really jelly like texture and if you squeeze too much out it can just get all over your lips and be a little overwhelming like you can actually taste it in your mouth so <laughs> uh, yeah you got to be careful how much you squeeze out. I'm gonna first put on my primers. I'm gonna use this one from Milk. This is their Hydro Grip Primer. It actually has a really tacky texture to it. I find the easiest way to apply is to pat it on top. Then I'm going to use this Fenty eye primer. I'm actually wearing the top from Woman. It's super cute. Look. <laughs> Woman, if you guys haven't heard, is the brand that Sophia and Whaley just launched. I remember seeing them wear this top and immediately I was like, I have to have it. It's so cute. It's like the perfect top for me because it's one of my favorite colors to wear and it's a crop top which I love and it's super soft. Next, I'm going to use the Milk Makeup Flex Foundation. I'm in the shade Golden Nude and this is the perfect match for my skin tone. It just blends in so nicely. I really, really love this foundation. It's really rare for me to like a stick foundation because usually they're just, I don't know, a lot more tedious to work with. I just never really gravitate towards them or they come out really thick. But this one is just so freaking pretty and it looks like skin. I have a pimple over my nose. It hurts so bad. Now I'm going to use this makeup spray from Clarins. It's so pretty, the packaging. It's a really light mist that just helps to set everything. And it also has a light rose fragrance to it. I'm going to set with this Laura Mercier powder now. This was one of the first powders I ever tried. I remember this was so iconic when it first came out and um, I still freaking love this. So as you guys know, if you watch my makeup tutorials, I just like to do a light set so I'll just Go over my under eye area first and then go around my chin, forehead. I like doing a light powder set because when I apply the bronzers and the blush, I don't want my foundation to be moving around too much. Next, I am going to do my brows. I'm still on my Anastasia Dip Brow Pomade. Uh, I did change the shade recently. Before I was using the blonde one, but it just looked too light for my hair now, so I moved to Ebony, which is this really dark brown, almost black color. It's like the second to darkest shade, and I thought it would just um, help enhance my features a little bit because this hair is so light now. It just helps it to pop more. Let me just fill that in really quickly. That's it for brows. I'm gonna move on to the eyes. I'm gonna use Mood Editing's I Do This For Me palette. Mood Editing is a new makeup brand that just launched. I worked with them in a previous video. Did this like glittery fall makeup look, so I'll link it in the description box if you guys wanna watch it. I love the glitters, especially in this palette, but we're not gonna be using those today. First, I'm just gonna take this shade down here. I think it's called Chaos. It's just a light cream shade that I want, I'm gonna apply over my eyes. That's going to be the base color. It just helps to blend the other colors easier later. Even though you don't see anything, I feel like times where I haven't done this, it is harder for me to blend. I actually think this shade is called Metis. Um, but next I'm going to take this top shade over here. It's like a mauve color called Jays. Jays. These are all named after Greek goddesses and planets, so they have really unique names. I'm just going to apply that all over the lid. I'm going to avoid the inner corner a little bit because that's where the blue is going to go. I'm not going to put too much of this color over there. I actually just asked for questions on my Instagram story for a Q&A. 
Um, I'm not gonna be answering those questions in this video. I'm gonna do it in another one, but if you guys have questions or you have certain topics that you want me to talk about in the future, feel free to just DM me or leave it in the comments down below. I've been getting a lot of requests for a favorite brushes video. I'm planning on doing one still. I just wanna film it in a really unique way and I haven't come up with an idea yet. Right now I'm using two different brushes to apply the eyeshadow, uh, one to kind of pack on the color and then this Real Techniques brush is for blending out the edges. Also going to apply that to the lower lash line. That's what it looks like so far. So now I'm going to take this dark brown color called, I think this one's called Chaos, and I'm just going to apply that to the outer corner of my eyes, so right here. This is just gonna add some depth and dimension. I know I always say that in my tutorials. Next, I'm going to use this Makeup Forever Aqua XL Color Paint, and this is an M24, which is their sky blue color. This is actually a lip brush, and I'm going to use this to apply this to the inner corner of my eyes. I love these color paints because they have so much pigment and color in them. Um, they are a little bit tricky to work with. I don't know if it's because Mine are just a bit old. They come out a little bit dry, like a powder texture, and you just gotta work with it really fast. Let me zoom you guys in. So I'm just applying it to the inner corner of my eyes, and I'm actually going over, I think this is called the epicanthic, I forget, epicanthic fold for monolids. So I'm also going to apply it into this little corner here. I got too much on the brush this time, so now it's coming out really strong, which means I need to be extra careful with blending it out. So I'm gonna go and apply this, apply it to this eye first, actually. So sometimes I do that where if I get too much product on the brush, I'll just apply it to the other side of my face so I don't go too overboard on one side. I feel like that's one makeup trick or hack that people don't think about that they might automatically do already. Because sometimes I get too much blush on the brush and you don't wanna keep building it on the same side of the face because it's just gonna look over blushed. So I'll just dab it here and then I'll go to the other side. Might sound really obvious now that I say it out loud, but maybe some people don't know that. And what I like to do is apply it in tiny brush strokes. It really is like paintings. Now I like to actually drag out the top edge and create this rounded shape. I even like making it look like brush strokes. I think it looks really pretty that way. It doesn't have to be perfect or anything. So now I'm just going over another layer to make it a little bit more blue and make it pop. And there you go. That's pretty much it for the eyeshadow. You can put on lashes if you want to. You don't have to do liner, but I'm going to do liner. I'm going to do a sharp winged line with um, brown liner actually instead of black. Black might be a little bit too harsh for this look, but that's totally up to you and your preference. So I like to draw out my wings first. First I use the brown dolly wink liner to draw out the line, but it's drying out, so I need to use a different one now. Okay. So I just drew the outline of the wings and now I'm going to use a third liner to fill in the wing. So this is the Benefit Roller Liner in Brown. Sometimes I do use like three different liners to do my wing just because it's just easier for me to use different tools for different reasons. The Dolly Wink one is a very precise liner because the brush tip is more stiff so it doesn't bend as much. You have more control over lines. It's very, it's really good. I love this the most and I'm very conservative when I use this because I want it to last for a long time. The M Cosmetics brush tip is more flexible so it bends more. It's also a little bit more wet, so it's more fluid. Really great if you have really good steady hands, but my hands are not that steady, so that's why I like the Dolly Wink one. And then the Benefit Roller Liner is a felt tip, so it's thicker, and this just makes filling in my winged liner easier and faster. They're all really great liners. Benefit one is a lighter brown than the other two, though, so I'm gonna do my best to mix and blend these shades so it's not too noticeable. Now I'm going to apply my lashes. I'm using the Ardell Wispies, of course. <laughs> 
I've been watching a lot of TV recently um, since getting my living room all set up. Watching TV for me is my form of self-care because it's the one thing that I do that I don't let myself feel guilty for because I love pop culture, I love TV, and I just love escaping into different worlds and um, I, maybe escaping is a bad word. I feel like now it's gotten such a bad connotation, but honestly, it's just the one place that I can shut my brain off and just pay attention to something else and not worry about my life and my problems for like a few hours. <laughs> so I wanna talk about some shows that I've been watching because I've been watching a lot. You guys know if you watch my favorites video that I love the 100. There were a few things that I forgot to talk about and mention in my favorites video about the show. So I'll do a quick premise. If you guys haven't seen it, um, it's pretty much about the end of the world. There's a civilization that lives on a satellite and then one day they decide to send 100 of their people back to Earth to see if it's habitable again. And this is 100 years after a nuclear war destroyed the planet. And so in that, I didn't get to talk about how there are so many multifaceted female characters taking on big leadership roles in the show in so many different ways like you have someone who becomes a warrior you have someone being the very like strategic smart leader of the group and she has to make a lot of tough choices for everyone then you have another female character who is an engineer mechanic and she's just so freaking smart and they're all just so multifaceted and really great characters and really good female role models to look up to. Of course they have their weaknesses and their complexities and all that, but they're just so amazing as characters. Another thing I really love about the show is that one of the females on the show um, in the very beginning has a relationship with this boy and then later she has a relationship with um, another female leader. I'm not I'm trying not to give away too much, but it's never talked about like her sexuality is never talked about It's just accepted and given that before she used to love this guy and now she loves this girl and It's just accepted. They're so far in advance in the future that those aren't issues anymore like they, that they are today And I thought that was really amazing that you can watch a show where none of that is questioned It's not really like an issue on the show if that makes sense and I mean that in the best way possible. Um, not that it should be overlooked, but just that it should be accepted as normal and not a point of discussion of um, of debate, of debate, not a point of debate. It just finished its sixth season and there's one more season left. And um, because it debuted like six years ago, I really think it's a show that's been ahead of its time for a while and I'm sad it doesn't get more recognition. Oh, I'm using the Charlotte Tilbury Film Star Bronze and Glow Palette now to contour and highlight. I love this palette. It has a really good neutral contour shade. Big Mouth Season 3 also premiered. Um, I've already finished all the episodes. This season is not my favorite. I feel like the first season was really good obviously because it got me hooked, but the second season, I remember loving it so much. The third season is still pretty good, but I don't know, there's just something that's not there that's missing. I, uh, If you guys don't know what Big Mouth is, it's a cartoon, it's an animated series, there's a bunch of comedians that voice the characters, and it's so freaking funny! It's about these middle schoolers who are going through puberty, they get hormone monsters, and you just kind of see them go through life and how they deal with stuff, <laughs> how they deal with puberty and growing up and relationships and friendships and all middle school things people go through. I hated middle school, I hated high school. So watching this show actually just validates so much of your preteen pubescent experiences because I was like, oh my God, they're talking about things that I questioned, that I thought about, that I wondered when I was 12, when I was 13. And I'm really excited because I heard that it got renewed for um, at least three or four more seasons and I'm so excited. So Nick Kroll is the, I think he's the creator of the show. He voices many of the main characters. John Mulaney is on the show. He's like one of my favorite comedians. I think he's just really funny. I also watched Disenchantment. Oh, by the way, I just put on some light blush. Very neutral blush from The Balm. This is their Beach Balm blush. Um, but yes, back to Disenchantment. It's another animated series on Netflix and it's 
created by, I believe, Matt Groening, who did The Simpsons. I've never been crazy about disenchantment. It's always just been something fun to have playing on the background. And it's, you know, kind of cheeky. It's got that Simpsons humor in a way. If you guys watch Disenchantment, I want to know your thoughts too, because I'm not crazy about it, but I don't hate it. <laughs> Which is a great way to feel about a show. I'm gonna use the highlighter now from the Charlotte Tilbury palette. I also watched The Boys recently on Amazon, which is about um, these superheroes who are actually really awful and um, The Bodyguard on Netflix. That's the one with James Madden. I think that was his last name. That show was really good, really suspenseful. And I think he won a Golden Globe for his performance in this show or was nominated. It's about this soldier who comes back from Afghanistan and now he has to be the bodyguard for the Secretary of State in the UK and all this drama unfolds and he's caught up in this conspiracy plot thingy. There's only six episodes. I heard there's a second part of the series coming but I don't know if it's if he's gonna be in it. Um, oh, if you don't know who James Madden is, he was in Game of Thrones. He played the eldest Stark brother, Rob Stark, one of my favorite Starks. I mean, in the beginning, he was like my favorite strike. Moving on to lip color. I used two different lip colors that day because I just couldn't decide. So I just mixed these two. These are from Huda Beauty. It's their Power Bullet Matte Lipsticks. I feel like looking at this lip color now, you could also use a really clear pink gloss. I think that would be really pretty too. But I'm gonna use these because that's what I initially used for the look. This is the shade called Board Meeting. It's a really pretty matte brown tone. It's really great for 90s looks and for fall. Next, I'm going to use this shade called First Kiss. I'm going to use this brush to apply it. This is the Real Techniques Accent Brush. I think this is used for your eyes, but I'm going to just use this to grab a little bit of that shade and apply it to the center to create a gradient lip. I kind of want to curl my hair, but I also just kind of want to leave it like this because it's easy. <laughs> I think I'm going to curl it so I can show you guys how I curl my hair. I get a lot of questions on doing a hair tutorial, how I curl my hair. I already have like two or three hair curling tutorials on my channel, so I'm always a little bit reluctant to do another one because I curl it pretty much the exact same way. My hair color has just changed so many times within this past year that now those videos seem outdated, so I might do a full hair curling tutorial again. We'll see. Let me go get my curling iron. While that's heating up, I might as well show you the pants that I'm wearing which are these ones from Boyish. They're actually like a off-white cream color, but they just look completely white. The ends are also distressed and have this cut-off look. So it's really cute. And then this hair tie scrunchie thing is from H&M. One of my um, previous hairstylists told me that hairspray actually works really well as a heat protectant. So that's what I've been using, but I feel like I need a proper heat protectant in my hair before I curl it. I've tried to cut back on curling my hair because I can see how it's affected my hair and I just don't wanna damage it anymore. So I'm using the Conair Iron. This is the 1.25 inch. It has heat settings from one to 30. I used to curl it on 30, so now I try to do 15. I used to use the one inch curling iron. Because my hair is so short, I feel like when I use a one inch one, it just makes me curl a lot more of my strands and it gets really poofy the first day that I curl it so I'm switching over to the 1.25 inch to see if I like that look. Um, I've only curled my hair once with this 1.25 inch curling iron so I haven't really decided yet if I like it more or less. I feel like I could get really technical and detailed with all this hair and makeup stuff when I don't need to be but I'm gonna tell you guys anyway so you know my thought process and I feel like that is what's most helpful is when I tell you my thought process behind why I use this brush or why I use this color, or why I use this formula. Um, that helps more so that you can decide on your own like what kind of product or tools to use for yourself. I feel like that's more helpful rather than just like, hey, use this color, use this and that. And then you try to like substitute your own products and it doesn't work out because the formula is different, the texture is different, whatever. So I just try to tell you my thought process behind things when I can. I want to help you feel empowered. It's like the that saying when you give 
teach a man to fish, you can fish. Fuck. <laughs> what is this saying? Give a man a fish, feed him for a day, teach him how to fish, feed him for a lifetime, something like that. Oh God, I'm awful. This is how I curl my hair. I'll start with this strand and show you guys. I started curling my bangs first. My hairstylist helped me realize this. When I curl it last, the curling iron has been so hot that it really damages the front parts of my hair. So usually I take a strand about this size, take the curling iron, start in the middle of the strand, roll it upwards, sl slowly or quickly, whatever, release it, release the clamp, roll it down, pull it straight, and then out. Got it? <laughs> I don't know if that made sense because that was really hard for me to explain myself, but let me curl the top part of this again. So pretty much you take the strand, put the curling iron in the middle of the strand, roll it upwards, slowly release the clamp a little bit as you're going down the strand, twist it, pull it down, and then release. And you get this really pretty, effortless looking curl. That's kind of the hairstyle that I like. Doesn't have to be perfect. I need another hair tie. Okay, I'm gonna use this actual scrunchie to separate this. There you go. So with those strands, I curled it in towards my face. The barrel was going this way, so I like to alternate. That's how it creates that disheveled curled look. So I'm going to take the next strand and face the barrel this way. So the clamp is in the front. Put it in the middle, roll it up, and then pull it down. Twist it. So I'm just curling the top layers and leaving the bottom layers as is. It'll look better once the this part, the top knot, once I can curl those. So because my hair is so short, I'm pretty much just grabbing whatever strand I can and wrapping it around the barrel. I'll show you guys again because I feel like this is a better strand to work with and demonstrate. So I take the strand, I'm gonna curl it outward this time. The clamp is facing the front, stick it in the middle, roll it upwards, hold it for a little bit, slowly release the clamp like that, and then roll the barrel up and then pull it straight down into a twist, like that. And you get this curled strand right here. And then for this second strand, I'm gonna curl it inward. So the clamp is facing backward. I'm gonna roll it up like this. And like that. Once you run your fingers through it, it gives it that effortless look. And you can also use some hairspray or texturizing spray. Okay, I'm gonna finish curling the rest of my hair really quickly and I will be right back. So this is what my hair looks like after I've curled it. Usually I'll put in some spray to add more volume to the top so it's not so cone shaped or I just split it to the side like that. But I think I'm gonna tie it back up into the half ponytail because I thought that was really cute. Okay, I'm gonna get my bangs out of the way. There you go. So this is the finished look. Again, if you guys have any topics you want me to cover, feel free to leave them down in the comments or you can just DM me on Instagram if it's something private that you don't want to share publicly. I can leave it anonymous. Thanks for getting ready with me today. I hope you enjoyed this video and listening to me chat a bit more. Please give it a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe if you wanna see more videos from me. Wow, I have not said that in so freaking long, actually. It feels so weird. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.